Hello, thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Alora and I am on the Visor team. And today we are going to address a narrative that isn't often talked about, and that is the financial implication of switching to cloud. As cloud becomes more and more popular, vendors are actually only offering cloud options. So we thought it would be worth covering how this shift in software consumption is affecting your financial statements. You might be attending this webinar for curiosity or a person involved in a company's budget, especially in IT. Regardless, this will be a knowledgeable presentation to help you make more informed decisions. So I want to clarify that this webinar is not to choose whether one option is be better than the other. There is no single winner. It really depends on your organization. I'm just going to guide you through the differences between choosing one or the other. And that is my sole purpose today. Some other small things to note. This presentation is about 15 minutes. The PowerPoint will be sent to you after the presentation and using that email you can also send us questions directly and we can answer them for you before we review the agenda i also want you to know that we have a little surprise for you at the end of the session so stay tuned we are going to go through some pros and cons of the cloud option we are going to review some financial definitions I'm going to tell you exactly how choosing one over the other will affect your financial statements, and I will demonstrate it with some examples. So let's kick off this webinar with a fact. More than $1.3 trillion in IT spending will be affected by the shift to cloud by 2022. I'm not sure about you guys, but as soon as I read this, I asked myself, why? why this shift and i'll actually give you a few reasons so the first reason is that cloud is becoming so popular that a lot of software providers are only offering cloud applications it's also great for end users because it's a pay-as-you-go model which allows customers to cancel their subscriptions at any time and finally another reason that i can think of was Many software providers actually include upgrades with their subscriptions, making it an even more appealing option for end users. To illustrate the attractiveness of cloud, think of Netflix. You never have to worry about a patch every time they introduce a new movie. You can cancel at any time because none of us like contracts anymore, let's be real. There's a small monthly fee. It's very easy to set up. You can add separate accounts for your child or remove a friend when they're being annoying. And many people can watch at the same time. For these reasons, these subscription models are very attractive and a lot of users are starting to choose them over permanent licenses. Now let's look at some cons. By having your information in the cloud, there are some, some security risks. There is dependence on having an internet connection. And over time, there is actually a higher cost. And at this last point, that's when we start to realize, oh wait, there are financial implications that we are not paying attention to. And that's what we're gonna go into. But before we do so, I just want to review some financial definitions very quickly without too much detail. Cash flow statement. Cash flow, the money flowing in and out of your business, important to know to keep your company running. Balance sheet is the financial position of your organization at a certain point in time. It includes your assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. It's important to obtain the net worth. Remember that. Income statement. That's where you report the profits and the losses of your organization. It focuses on revenue and expenses, and it states whether the company is making a profit. Now let's review types of expenses. First, capital expenses. Think long-term. 
the buildings that your company owns, the computer equipment, office equipment, machinery, and licenses that you own. On the flip side, there are operating expenses, which are ongoing expenses to keep things going. That includes office supplies, sales commissions, property tax, utility costs you want to keep the electricity on, and software subscriptions, right? So clearly, a permanent license would fall under the capital expenses, and a software subscription would be under operating expenses, okay? Remember that? Now we're going to dive in some financial implications. Now let's dive in to the financial implications. This is a summary of what happens to your financials when you opt for the subscription model, okay? But now let's go into each one very clearly. When you choose a subscription model, the operating expenses of your cash flow increases. Why? Operating expenses require payments over a longer period of time, okay? This means that you don't have to invest in a large one-time payment anymore like you would for a permanent license. You don't have that upfront cost. Instead, you're paying a smaller sum over a longer period of time. So because you're doing that, you actually have a higher cash flow. So if your organization needs a higher cash flow, the subscription model is the way to go. When choosing a subscription model, there is a decrease in assets on the balance sheet. Remember, when purchasing permanent licenses, that would be considered a long-term investment, right? We just covered those. However, when you replace that with an operating expense, you are removing the assets. And this makes it seem like you are removing equity or, in quotations, value from your organization. So if you need to be impressing some shareholders, shifting to cloud is not always ideal, at least not doing it all at once. You might want to do it over time. When you pick a subscription model, there is an increase in short-term operating income on the income statement. So by removing the permanent license, you do not have to subtract the amortization from the gross income, okay? Because you're opting for an operating expense. Therefore, you're actually increasing your net income. If you want a higher short-term operating expenses, then you would choose a subscription model. Don't worry, I will send this all to you after. The next one is kind of interesting. The tax benefits. Obviously, tax benefits vary depending on where you're located. So I'm going to focus on the U.S. And in the U.S., tax code permits organizations to deduct all of their capital expenditures from their taxable income immediately. This is instead of deducting it over a certain period of time. So subscriptions prevent you from benefiting from the tax deductions. And this is something you can you should consider if you're spending a huge amount of money on software expenditure. And finally, the last financial implication I want to cover is the actual cost itself. So subscription-based licenses cost more over time. At this point, it's important to weigh the pros, the cons, and all the financial implications that I've listed before making a decision. So let's, get, let's give you an example. Subscription-based models are more flexible and you can cancel at any time, okay? For some people, it's worth spending more over a longer period of time to have that option, to have the ability to just leave whenever they want. If that's the case, obviously consider subscription model, right? However, if your organization wants a higher tax deduction, that's when you have to start thinking, okay, it would be nice to have the flexibility of a subscription model, but for now we might have to purchase a permanent license. 
So it's important to consider all the factors before deciding, but I do want to show you an example of how the subscription model costs over time in case you never actually saw a visual representation of this. So on this slide, we actually have the cost of an Office 365 license, which is on the left, and one Microsoft 2019 license. So the left one is the cloud-based and the right one is the permanent license. Now, obviously with everything we said, a lot of people will pick the monthly subscription. They could leave at any time. They have the upgrades included. It's very appealing. However, what vendors don't mention is that after a certain period of time, you are actually paying more for this license. So in this, vi vi <laughs> in this visual representation, you can see that with a monthly subscription, you are constantly contributing to the cost of the license. For you to be able to use it, you have to keep paying. However, with the permanent license, you just pay once. Now in this example, we are not considering upgrades or any extra money for support. This is solely based on using the license. Even more so, you can see it in this chart. So from month one to about 19, you are actually saving money by using a subscription model. However, as soon as you get to month 20, you are starting to contribute more to use this license than if you would have purchased a permanent one. So to summarize everything, I put all this information in one slide. So if you are to take anything away from this presentation, you can screenshot this slide and you'll have everything. Now, before we wrap things up, I just want to give you a real world example. Let's say you need to buy a software, but you're not sure if you need cloud or a permanent license. You consider the company's finances, what shareholders expect to see in the company's financial statements, and you know that the company plans to increase cash flow in the next three months. So what do you decide? Maybe for this specific license, you are going to opt for a monthly subscription because you need that extra cash flow. So I also want to point out a few factors to consider when switching to cloud. If you have a fast growing company or you have high seasons with more employees, a subscription model is probably more ideal because you can add or remove licenses whenever you want. If you have a software that has a lot of upgrades, you want to consider a subscription to avoid the additional costs with a permanent license. Finally, consider what the vendor offers before making a decision. It really would not be ideal to want a subscription model to find out that the vendor only offers permanent licenses. So these are also additional factors to consider when making a decision. And that about wraps things up. But before you leave, I want to offer you a special gift for attending. As you may recall, I work for Visor, an IT asset management tool for hardware and software. And if you sign up for a product demonstration, we will give you an extra two hours of training when you purchase your Visor solution. You must be wondering, okay, that offer really isn't bad, but what does Visor look like? So for the next few minutes, if you want to stick around, I will show you what the product looks like and you can decide whether or not you want a product demonstration. So I'm just going to switch screens here. All right. So this is Visor. This is the dashboard. What's great about it is on the left hand side here, there are quick links to absolutely every section in Visor. And on the right side, you can customize the widgets to projects you're working on or things that you are responsible for. And you can customize them here. So let's say you have action types that you need to know. You apply, they pop up, 
And what's great is that you can go right to them if you need to know more information. And they are all right here. Then with this cube at the top, you can go back to the quick links into anything you need. View your assets, check them in, check them out. Also have a barcode reader, your software, and this can be your on-prem licenses and your cloud ones. And for anything that's on your network, we also integrate with SUCM or have our own network discovery tool to pick them up for you. And we also integrate with spreadsheets and a few other solutions. Keep track of your employees in here, locations, so many things, vendors. So actually I want to show you locations. So if you go into locations, you can drill down a lot. So, okay, let's say you have two offices. Let's say we go to Belgium, Brussels, the North Campus. You can even go by floor. And then which no matter where you are, you can go and see which assets are in each place, which is pretty cool. They're all here all here. Then let's say we want to go look for an asset. There are so many ways to do so. You can use the search bar. You can use the queries, which are up here. There are so many queries that you can say that you can look for. So let's say retired assets. There you go. Let's say you want to use your barcode reader, put it in there, beep, there you have it. If you need to add an asset, right here. So everything is pretty easy to use. There's reporting, there's custom reporting, it's so cool. Should I show you? View. only show a summary no asset name asset type asset tag you can look at so many things by things by manufacturer model by not model number by serial number all these options to get anything you are looking for Then if you need to see something specific, you can drill down and customize what you see. Then let's say you find exactly what you're looking for. You can easily export it right here. You click on the one that you need. Boom, done. I can go on for quite a while. So I'm just going to bring us back to the home page. And if you need any more information, you let me know. And don't forget to sign up to your product demonstration so that we can show you a lot more cool things. I hope you have a great rest of the day and thank you for joining me today.